there of length. This is a little bit deeper. And those are in those clusters of the shoulders and the neck and the groin and the knee. So those are those gather stuff from the skin. And then once they hit those nodes, they have to travel even deeper. And then those are going to travel into the deep structures near the abdomen and near the spine. Those are the deepest limbs. So the third place that you have most of your limbs is in your gut, in your abdomen, particularly your intestines. And that's really important because the lymphatics are part of your immune system. And the majority of your immune system, we know from medicine, resides in your intestines. 70 to 80 percent of your strength as for your entire immune system is in your gut. So if the gut becomes compromised and people have what's called malabsorption syndrome or leaky gut syndrome or irritable bowel syndrome or Crohn's disease or anything, I mean, humans are just rock with so many digestive issues, right? Anytime stuff breaks through the gut, it's not supposed to break through the gut, your immune system sees it as an invader, and the first thing to greet it is lymph. So that's why the lymphatics can give you that very puffy and bloated, and you get a lot of inflammation around the abdomen. But because those sit so deep, if the deep lymphatics get blocked in the abdomen and the groin, then it'll create a backflow into the arms, into the legs, into the head. If you do the superficial limp really, really light, like on the skin and around those joints that I mentioned, that's a good first step. But you're ultimately going to have to go really, really deep to get the ones in the abdomen, uh, behind the sternum, and then into the neck, because that's the big block. And it's very important that you understand how lymph flows in the body. And it's based on the laws of how fluid moves. And physics is called hydrodynamics. And I just want you to think of water, because the lymph is mostly water. And water and fluid and hydrodynamics goes from high pressure to low pressure. It will naturally go to the lower pressure. The easiest way you can think about it is a water dam. It has a lot of pressure on one side and none on the other. Mm-hmm. If I lift the dam, what happens? <laughs> right? Everything goes. That's exactly what it is for lymph. So the lowest pressure for lymph, where it's always trying to travel to, is right above the collarbone. That's the lowest pressure in the body of the veins as they go back to the heart. So if that's the lowest pressure, then the highest pressure are going to be the furthest away from the neck. Yes. So it's going to be the top of your head, your hands, and your feet. So they're trying to send everything into that collarbone region. But they better not hit any blocks along the way. So if something is coming, let's say you twist your ankle on your left-hand side, and it's swollen. It's supposed to be swollen because the inflammation is there to protect you and to heal you. And swelling, by the way, is an immune system response. People need to understand that. It's not a it's not a musculoskeletal response. It's an immune system response. And so the idea is that you swell, you create waste from the swelling, and it has to go out. So now we know that the swelling in that ankle has to go all the way to your neck. All the way up. But in order to get there, it's got to get past those places I told you before. It's got to get it past the back of the knee. It's got to get past the groin. It's got to get past your abdomen. It's got to get past the chest. And then it's got to get to the neck. But I ask people is that what happens if you've got something blocked behind the knee that's, a, that's on that ankle side? All that swelling is going to go right to the knee, and then it's going to stay in your ankle because it can't get out, right? Not only can it can't get out, but what can't get down there? The stuff that you need to heal the ankle, the nutrients and the oxygen, right? That has to get there, too. And the reason I said the sternum is because the abdomen there, the largest lymph node in your body, by the way, which is about the size of a walnut, sits right in your abdomen about two inches up from your navel. And that takes all the lymph flow from the organs in your lower body right to that guy. And then from there, it goes along this pipe, this trunk called lymphatic trunk, 
that runs right behind your sternum, and then it goes up and splits off, and it goes to the left side of your neck, left side of your neck. So the interesting thing about the lip is it's not even from side to side. Your right side of your neck above the collarbone it was called a lymphatic duct, and that dumps into the veins. That dumps things from your right arm, the right head and neck, your right rib cage and right torso go to the right side of your neck. The rest of your entire body goes to the left side. So the left side is the big driver. So if you twist your ankle, it goes to the left. If I jack up my right knee, it goes to the left. If I jack up my low back, where does it go? Left it's side. Of the so it's very interesting, too, if you think about swelling on the back of the body. So if you've got pain in the middle of your back, the pain in the middle of your back actually has to travel around your back and go into the shoulder and the front. So that's where the swelling goes around the front into that pec region. If you have the swollen lower back and you've got a herniated disc and you're really painful in the back, all that swelling has to travel around your glutes and around your waist to your groin and it goes from your groin deep into your abdomen up to your neck so what i tell people is that you never want to do anything to try to reduce inflammation in the back of your body until you clear the front of your body first because if i've got swelling in my back what happens if i'm trying to reduce swelling in the back from like ultrasound or muscle stem or ice or heat or laser or whatever tool of the day you want to use because they all work. I got to make sure that the groin can take the inflammation, you follow? Mm -hmm. If you do that first, then you notice a huge difference in your outcome. So it's just a reframe of the order that you're doing things in. And then when people see it that way, they're like, well, holy cow, that makes a whole lot of sense. I'm like, I know it does. It does. <laughs> yeah, it's and it's e easy to do. Yeah. A lot of Americans, have, a lot of people have had their tonsils removed. What is your perspective on that in regards to the, its effect on the lymphatic system? 